Hello designers, I can't be with you today so I'm going to ask you to watch this video. Right now you should be with a partner or in groups of three um, per the instructions I sent on the email and then there are going to be stages within this video as you work through the different graphic design challenges where you'll stop and you'll do some exercises. You'll turn those in at the end of the period, okay? First thing I want you thinking about, just review what we did in the last class. I'm trying to give you some of the basic tricks that graphic designers use when they're constructing images and text. And so, let's see if I can get this to forward screen. There we go. If you remember, we started with the point that text and image should play, and that for me is the biggest point. If you can, in some way, get a powerful image and then bring in text that somehow enriches that or um, contradicts it in some way, you're at the heart of what graphic designers are doing. And we looked at some of these images here. I'll move myself around uh, when it covers images that we haven't seen before. But you've got that. And remember we went specifically here with the idea that you're either going to be designing posters for the climate march um, that we have on Friday, or you can do that, um, I'm trying to think, what was the other thing that we said? Um, oh man, I'm blanking. I'll think of it in a moment. But anyway, these would work well for that. And so we're here, we're talking about how images and text interplay. And then you had a quick exercise where you all did something. We also said that we're going for the wow. And the three tips that we cover in today are all about how do we make our images and how do we make our designs have that wow factor. We talked about the diagonal and use of diagonal lines and then we looked at some different examples where we had that. This one is really can be done really subtly or can be the main sort of feature of your design. What I want to talk to you now about is framing. Framing is the notion of a frame around an image like this video of me is framed in but it also has to do with what object is emphasized within the frame. If I put my hand very close to the screen and talk to you. I'm framing my face. Let's see if I can do it. That's very difficult. But I'm framing my face with my hand and the hand is the thing that you're going to notice because of the size that I've given it. So that's also framing. Positioning of the object but also bringing a border around whatever it is you want to draw the eye in. So let's look at this famous film poster from Sturm über Asia. And then, sorry Germans for that butchering of your language. The first thing I want to point out to you, do you notice this rough white line? It's a mostly black and white poster, but this rough white line is really important. It's not accidental. It's there because conceptually, if we want our eyes to focus in on something, we should frame it. When we put a frame around anything, it helps us focus in on the key information. Without that frame, it becomes less effective and our eyes sort of wander out and become borderless. The other aspect of framing though here is this large object that's in the top of the poster and in the foreground. If you look at it, take a moment with your partner and see if you can figure out what it is that we're looking at. If you had a discussion, you can pause the video if you need to. All right, now some of you might have come to the conclusion that it is a rider with his foot in the stirrup and the hoof of a horse. It's actually this small part of the smaller image that's in the background here. This is something designers, this is a trick designers use all the time. It can be very, very visually interesting to only give your viewer a portion of the object that you want and let them fill in what it is. It creates a sort of, um, um, a sort of job for your viewer and lets them see. If you saw this, this is probably the object that you noticed first and you're wondering what is it? Then you go further into the center of the poster to see it's a horse and a rider, and then we start to see the title. I also wanted to point out, do you notice the use of diagonal here? So while this text is lined up on the horizontal, notice the horizon line. It is not a perfect line. It curves up. So that's another use of a visual technique. Let's go and look at a few more. I'm going to move myself so that you can see, and we look at this first one. Okay. So we have um, a Davis Cup image from, this is a French poster, but this is like from the 20s or something. With your partner, tell me, what are we looking at? What is this circle? Take a moment, pause the video if you need to. Okay. For those of you that said it's a tennis ball, you're correct. It is a tennis ball. So 
it's an abstracted tennis ball, and the framing aspect is that it's large in the viewer's face, almost coming right out to the viewer so that that's what they notice. And that's an interesting technique. It's the primary thing that you notice. And then there's one other aspect of framing. See if you can spot it. I'll give you a moment. Here, the green boxes act as a frame and leave just a slight white border around the poster. And that's a really good thing. Here, I just my cut and paste. Um, it's there, but when I was doing my screenshot, I didn't quite get the left-hand margin. Okay, so that's framing. Let's look at the next poster. Here's another use of color. I just think it's an interesting use of color. Your frame doesn't always have to be a one solid color. It can be something interesting. And in this case, they're using gradient blue and gradient red. And they're picking up that red and the blue from the center of the poster, which I think is an interesting choice. Okay, let's go on to some more examples. Framing doesn't always have to be just a box either. With your partner, can you take a moment and look at this screenshot? It's actually a slide from a presentation and tell me how framing is used here. Go ahead and pause the video and you can have a chat with your partner. Okay. I'm assuming you're pausing it and now welcome back. What did you notice? What did you talk about? Here's what I'd like to point out. Here, we're using horizontal lines to actually create boxes. Notice that this line and this line are perfectly aligned in the center of this image, creating a sort of box around storytelling. Because of the font size, the font style, that's what comes out to us first. But then three little things I know about storytelling is framed in by these lines. There's even this vertical line. Didn't mean to do that. Give me just a second. The vertical line comes straight down to the center of the book. And that's all an interesting way of framing. It's using a T, essentially, to tell our eyes to look at this part of the poster. Interesting idea. Let's look at another one. OK. So here, I'm going to tell you what's on the left-hand side is not good design. On the right-hand side is good design. With your partner, can you pause the video and talk and see if you can't figure out on your own why the right side is much better than the left side? Go ahead and chat. Welcome back. Some of the things that you might have talked about, I hope you talked about, is alignment. Centering things is usually very difficult for us to focus in, especially when we have something that's text heavy. So when you have a lot of text to present, you want to think about first making snap lines. That's what this is called in the trade. We have a line. We can't see it, but it's there where all the text has been aligned to the left. And then thinking about font and thinking about the size of font and what's bolded and what isn't, in this case what's gray, what's black, helps us center in. And we have good design as our title, is as easy, and then these one, two, and three are like visual cues Notice that we have spaces. There's white space around this. It gives the eye something to rest, and we can see it much more easily. And when we do one, two, and three here, it just all blends together, and we can't focus in on what good design is about. There's one other little trick that I would show you with framing here, and I just added on the next slide. And let's look, and you can kind of see what comes through. Notice that I added just a very, very faint gray shadow around that to begin frame and bring the eyes in. Here it is without, here it is with. Do you notice the difference? When we as designers frame for our viewers, we're telling them where to go with that information. And I would add that little gray frame is a very subtle but very important aspect of graphic design. So here's just some other examples that I'd like you to quickly chat. I'm going to take my myself away, but you can still hear me. And I'd like you with your partner again, just pick any of these images and talk about what you noticed with framing. Go ahead and pause the video and do that. And then I'll come back and point out what I thought was important. Okay, welcome back. Some of the things that I hope you noticed and discussed. Over here is the image for Brilla.de or Brillin.de, glasses. Um, it's a website. And notice 
that we don't get the entire image. Instead, we get just half of the pair of glasses, and that's enough for us to visually figure out what this is about. And it just creates a sort of interest to have an unbroken, not a completely closed-in circle here. That's, I think, a very good graphic. FedEx, did you notice any framing here? Some of you clever, clever people might have noticed this arrow that is formed between the E and the X. That's intentional, and that's a very big part of FedEx's logo. That idea that FedEx is shipping things, moving things from one point to the next, and they wanted a forward-facing arrow within their design to connote that they're all about movement. And if you didn't notice that, that's okay. Not many people do. How about with Kill Bill? Here, I thought the important thing about framing was this black line through the center. What an interesting choice, right? To take an image and then to sever it in half with a black line. Makes sense when we're talking about the movie Kill Bill and our heroine with her sword. We, if you've seen the movie, probably not age appropriate for all of you, but maybe you've seen it. She's slashing things uh, with her samurai sword, so that makes sense there. But visually, it gives us interest. And notice that they give us only an image above the line and then all the text is below and slightly to the right. And it's reversed, going backwards. We still can read it. Um, we don't get every single word, but we know and can fill that in, and it creates visual interest. And this finally, this Russian, I think it's a movie poster, I'm not even sure, but I thought it was just so interesting with framing because of the hands. It seems like a horror film, doesn't it? Or something where we have this face that's under great stress, and it's framed in by the hand. Notice how the hand follows the jawline, and I think that's really important. I'm going to pause the movie now, and just, um, you'll have a quick exercise. Well, actually, I've got one more thing to show you, so I'm going to pause it here, and then you'll watch the second video, and then you're going to have this exercise to do. It's a little coloring exercise followed by a black and white exercise which we'll get to in a moment. Don't do that yet, though, okay? That's coming up. All right, thanks.